In this video, I will talk about how you can deploy your object detection model as a ROS2 node to a target device such as a Jetson Nano. A lot of robotics application requires an embedded controller due to the small size of the robots. Deploying your algorithms to these boards in such a way that it utilizes the limited resources effectively is crucial to a successful system. This video will go into details on how we can use MATLAB to deploy an object detection model to a Jetson or a Nano and make use of the CUDA capabilities for faster inference. To do this, there are certain add-ons that must be installed so MATLAB can communicate and generate code for the Jetson effectively, and these will be listed in the link below. For this demo, I have a pre-trained YOLO v4 network that is trained to detect underwater buoys. Additionally, I have a Jetson Orin Nano publishing an image over ROS2 under a specific topic. We'll now switch to MATLAB. Let's start by checking if the topics published by the Jetson is visible to MATLAB. Once we verify that, we can create a ROS2 node to do the detection. Here I have a node that subscribes to the image topic and publishes the detection results, which are the bounding boxes and labels. The boxes are published as a float32 multi-array and the labels are published as strings. Before we get into the main loop, We'll set some properties of the node, such as the frequency and the size of the image. In the main loop, we'll resize the image based on the size expected by the neural network and pass it to the predict function. The results are then published using the send function. Taking a closer look at the predict function, it can be seen that it simply passes the image into a pre-trained network and returns the bounding boxes scores, and labels. Before we begin code generation, it is important to test that the code works as expected in MATLAB. We'll do this by adding a breakpoint to first verify the detection results. With the execution paused, it can be seen that the predict function had returned some values for the bounding box and label. We can visualize these results by inserting the predicted values into the image. Once verified, we can remove the breakpoint and switch to Jetson to see if the topics are published. Running ROS2 topic list shows the topics published from MATLAB and we can further verify the values by echoing the topic. With the results verified, we can stop the execution and start setting up the coder to generate CUDA code for the Jetson. We'll initialize the coder by specifying that we want an executable ROS2. The next two lines tells the coder to build and run the generated code on a remote device, such as the Jetson Nano. We then specify the hardware requirements of the Jetson, which has an ARM64 processor. The following three lines tells the coder to generate GPU code using CUDNN. You can also use TensorRT if that's the library you're using for your application. If you're working on a different problem or algorithm where you might not need to use the GPU capabilities, you can skip these lines. Finally, the last four lines gives information on how to connect to the hardware. Giving the IP address and the username password lets MATLAB SSH into the device and copy the generated code into it. With the ROS node and coder configuration set, we can generate CUDA optimized code by running the code gen command and passing in the node and the configuration we just defined. This starts the code generation process and it takes a few seconds to generate the code, transfer it to the target device, build and execute the node. Once completed, you will have the ROS2 node running on the target device completely independent of MATLAB. We'll once again switch to the Jetson to verify that the node is running and echo the topics to ensure the correct values are published.
To find more information on code generation and training a neural network, check out the links in the description. Thank you for watching and hope you guys enjoyed the video.